Karnataka, that Mysore University, in civil engineering. And then I did my M.Tech in hydrology. Okay, from uh, earlier University of Roorkee, presently it is known as the Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee. And then I did from uh, water resources management from uh, Sambalpur University, Odisha. So almost, uh, I am basically from Karnataka, but uh, Bombay I was there for around uh, 15 years in Maharashtra. Uh, near Shiridi and then even I was with uh, Tata Consulting Engineers, Mumbai. I served there for eight years. Then later on, I shifted from uh, industry to academic field. And the last uh, 16 years, I am working in this university as a professor uh, of civil engineering. And my main interests are hydrology, particularly in groundwater hydrology. That is my specialization. And uh, as I said, we used to conduct many training programs, I think uh, some of you are already aware, uh, not only under GAN, from other sources also. And uh, I happens to attend uh, many programs uh, even throughout the world also. And uh, I think uh, 2011, Dr. Ali, 2011, uh, we were together participants in all of the workshop at Germany. So during that time I came to know Dr. Ali. Uh, he came from Iran. And uh, we were, uh, I think, almost uh, 10 days we were together and we enjoyed uh, that uh, Bukum, that is Ruhr University Bukum. And uh, because there is not like this training, okay? Uh, there the thing is uh, somewhat different. It's an European style, you are aware. Uh, there, food and other things we need to take care of. And we used to cook together. I used, uh, I think I brought your you know, noodles, many other things. I just came from India. And uh, we together cooked and we together eat and uh, he also brought something from my uh, at the time, some dry fruits, that is, etc. And uh, because, uh, and another thing is I am also a poor, poor vegetarian. There is another uh, drawback uh, as it has happened to me uh, because there uh, I think uh, beef and other uh, non-vegetarian food was there. And even water also, it was very difficult to get it because we used to get ozonized water because I am habitual to uh, tap water. Uh, even though it was poor, but uh, yes, that was the case over there. And we had a that in addition to, I think, uh, I am the only Indian uh, at that uh, at Kuh. I think you are the only from Iran. Uh, Iran and uh, India, we just started our uh, journey from there, 2011. And there were many uh, from other countries also. And uh, we learnt a lot at that place. Still, I could uh, remember all those professors uh, you, when you were showing uh, 2011. That was under uh, UNESCO program actually, UNESCO hydrological program they are running. Even you can attend uh, later on also, but one thing is you need to apply and you need to select uh, from your uh, thing. Okay. We are working on hydrology, or hydrology, or geology. It's an uh, interdisciplinary thing actually. And uh, entire, uh, almost all, if you have been offered uh, full scholarships, okay. Uh, so all expenses will be borne by that UNESCO IHP program only. Okay, this is an uh, opportunity to you, so you can also attend, but uh, selection will be tough for nowadays, uh, particularly so now it is, uh, India is considered as a almost a developed country, okay, but still, yes, accept some nominations, uh, uh, maybe two, three, something like that, uh, so I wish uh, some of you will succeed, because uh, they prefer youngsters, they prefer those who are working for uh, the research in that uh, specific field, and other uh, criteria. Okay. Uh, so, journey started from over there, and now uh, we, I think uh, uh, almost a year back we put up a proposal to MHRD, uh, to the GYAN, and the GYAN is also interested in youngsters. Okay. Uh, I just put up some uh, proposals with uh, two seniors also. Uh, that is filed actually. Yes, uh, uh, and uh, they selected. Uh, I am happy to say that uh, Dr. Ali, uh, because his work was on uh, water quality modeling and other things, he worked a lot. And uh, he has uh, two universities uh, experience. Okay. He was from Iran. He worked in that university, I think almost 10 years. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, around 10 years experience is there at uh, Imam Khomeini International University. And later on, uh, now he is at uh, Germany. Okay. So that experience from rural university it's a, a very nice university because I didn't see his uh, Iran University. There is uh, Imam Khomeini International University. I never visited. Uh, but only just now today I saw pictures and uh, our colonists on the website. So 
uh, university I had been to, I was there and uh, we enjoyed, as I said, uh, thing. I still we are in touch with them. Uh, so this is all our uh, journey started. And uh, of course, now another other program will be there from Gyan that has been postponed to next uh, March, March uh, 19 to 23. That professor is coming from Texas and m University, USA, uh, from uh, College Station, Texas. Uh, Professor V.P. Singh, I think uh, those who are in hydrology, you know very well, his books are very famous, particularly on hydrology and watershed management and other aspects. He is uh, uh, alumni of this university itself, 1964 or 65, he completed his B.Tech in agriculture engineering from this university only. Okay? And from almost uh, last uh, 40 plus years, he is in U.S. Only B.Tech he did it from Pantanagar, okay? our time was on U.P. only. I think first batch, second batch of the university only. Let me show it to uh, US and it is a PhD and nothing from USSR and is well on Texas and M.S.3 at the uh, question. Uh, this program will be doing uh, 920 of March 2019. Okay. Uh, so this is a uh, brief introduction of me and we conduct other programs which are funded by uh, science academies and then uh, DST, then our own uh, TechCube uh, organizations. So with the help of uh, TechCube 3 only, we could able to offer you free of charges boarding and lodging and also your uh, local travel and even some of the visits which and even uh, course material etc. Because GAN is not funding for these things. GAN is funding only for external uh, faculty only, industry faculty only. So remaining expenses we have to bear and uh, yeah, we need to manage. But in DST or in ACT or in uh, science academy programs, some of them, they are funded, some of them uh, partially funded, some of them fully funded. And uh, in future also, we thought of uh, collaborating with uh, uh, rural University Germany and also Iran. We hope so, we'll be having more collaborations in future also. Okay, I request uh, you people to introduce yourself and your field of uh, working or doing the research in field and uh, in which field and other things. You please introduce yourself and you can say something about your university or whatever the institutions may be. Please. Uh, also appreciate it if you uh, describe briefly uh, about your subject that you're working on. Yes, uh, briefly. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nada Bola, and I did my B.Tech from Dwarahat in Civil Engineering, Kumau Engineering College, Dwarahat, and this Thank you. And now I'm doing MTech uh, from Pannagar University in Hydraulic Engineering. And this is my first year. That's all. Uh, I'm Ninu. Uh, I'm pursuing MTech from the University in Hydraulic Engineering. Uh, this is my first year. I take first year. And that's all. Myself, Varun Sukla. I have completed my UG from Banas Hindu University in Chemistry Honors and MSc pursuing and I have completed my dissertation working wasteland chain detection by the help of remote sensing and GIS technology by the using Bhuvan portal uh, for uh, uh, receiving the data and uh, my topic is wasteland chain detection in Bhuvan district from Santra and using uh, uh, IIRs uh, different types of data and uh, two three point five relation data and also we got it uh, different types of mapping and monitoring of natural resource and uh, UP SLRP project with the project Saudi client recommendation and sir my working field is environmental science and also water quality analysis. Thank you. Hello everyone, myself Swamin Singh, I am from <coughs> Company University. Uh, I am pursuing my MSc in Environmental Science recently. Uh, 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 recently, I um, work on a project uh, in Namami Gange, in which we digitize the map of uh, 1983 of the Ganga Basin. And uh, we are working on the uh, satellite imagery, Landsat 8 or uh, Cartosat data. And we, uh, we digitize all the Ganga Basin and uh, their elevation. Hello everyone, I am Ankita Verma from CSGM University Kanpur and I have completed my dissertation 
from uh, Ministry of Water Resources, Tamami Ganga. I am Manus Kumar Tripathi from Department of Environmental Science and pursuing MSc in Environmental Science. Uh, my dissertation work is completed on pollen grain diversity and taxonomical in uh, Udhampur, Udhampur district, Jammu Kashmir. And uh, I am as well, I am uh, working on wetland, uh, wetland area in uh, Unnao district. Okay. Uh, sir, wetland Nawab but surrounding of Nawab but century in Unnao district. Hello everyone, I am Rajpriya and I am doing research on groundwater assessment and uh, assessment of water quality is a part of my work and that's why I am atten attending this training program so that I can learn some tools and techniques to use in my research work. That's all. Thank you. Good morning everybody. Um, myself is Roy. I am working on working as a research scholar um, at the Department of Geography, Banaras Hindu University. Uh, my research topic is hydrogeomorphological investigation using the remote sensing and GIS techniques um, at uh, Western Dun Valley, Asan River Basin, Western Dun Valley. Um, in my research, I um, work on various remote sensing satellite imagery, um, multi-temporal satellite imagery, and the digital illusion mill. Mm, here, um, I work also uh, work with so the ground exploration for the aquifer mapping uh, with uh, vertical vertical sounding method. Uh, and um, I also work with the water quality, uh, water quality mapping. Good morning, everyone. I am Anjit Varu uh, from Banas University. I am currently uh, studying in Mass in Department of Social Science. So, I am doing with the nutrient interactions in the soil and so I, I'll, I think I will learn something from here so, so that I can link with soil and water in the soil, soil and water and about the interactions of the nutrients present over there. Thank you. Good morning everyone. Uh, I'm Navi Sama. I did my B.Tech uh, in Agriculture and Engineering and attack soil water engineer from Kerala Agriculture University. From last four years, uh, I am working as a project officer. That project is based on the groundwater recharge. Uh, it is uh, funded by the International Water Management Institute. So, we are doing uh, with the no, uh, groundwater recharge is not a new thing. We are doing for the controlling of the water quality. How the, if we are introducing the, if we are recharging uh, through the uh, flood water, then how it's going to change the aquifer property and uh, how how the impact are on the water quality. So uh, we have the last year data, regular interval with uh, different geometer. So we see the impact of uh, how much uh, uh, distance the uh, recharge is impacting. So either it's in term of quantity or in term of quality. So through the, this training, uh, I will be able to learn some new approaches that I can incorporate in my work. That is, thank you. Hello, I am Balwant Singh from Shivas Allahabad. I am doing MSc Agronomicology. Hi, Evan. I am Mislia Elvagba. I am doing MX in, in Hydrology and Water Source Engineering. My risk topic is about water quality modeling um, in river surface water. So, this course is very useful for me to relate uh, my uh, project. Uh, I completed my BE in civil engineering and uh, uh, I'm pausing now. And that's Good morning, sir, and hello, everyone. I'm Surindra Negi. I'm a research scholar from the Department of Environmental Science uh, from the same university. And uh, I have uh, joined, attended, attending the training because uh, my uh, thesis work is focused on the ground pollution remediation and mainly heavy metal pollution and the remediation of it uh, using the nanoparticles. Uh, so far I have uh, applied uh, HPI index and so further I would like to also come, uh, <laughs> I would like to know the other uh, modeling that required to determine the water quality. Thank you. Good morning sir and hello everyone. I am Anurag Sanadia. I completed my UG from Iragani Recreation Institute at third and now I am pursuing MCA from Yurt Currently I am in second year so at this will be 
how climate change affect quality of water thank you hello everyone myself mohan molhem uh, from department of geology aligarh muslim university i am doing research on uh, eco hydrological character of uh, alakranda basin mainly central himalaya uh, i am doing research in mainly uh, stream on stream and uh, uh, spring yeah ग्रेविटी Good morning, everyone. My name is Saroj Rana. I did my uh, graduation B.Tech from uh, civil in civil engineering from Gravia Rao University, Dharun. Now I'm pursuing Tech Soil and Water Conservation Engineering, and uh, I just started my thesis top. This is work on the topic water quality monitoring of Alagnanda River. Thank. Water quality monitoring Alagnanda River that is in Uttarakhand. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vaibhav Devli. I completed B.Tech in Civil Engineering. Now I am a student of SWC Department in GVPAT, Pandnagar. Uh, I am recently research on lake management by QGIS with the help of Landsat 8 data. Good morning, all of you. I am Jyoti Karia. I am pursuing M.Tech second year from Hydraulics Engineering under the guidance of Ajay Shiva Prasad, and my topic is Water Evaluation Planning System. Hello everyone my name is Meenakshi Ramola and I am pursuing my MTech under the guidance of Jyoti Prasad ma'am in M hydraulic engineering and my thesis topic is dam breach analysis in hackras model so i think that uh, this uh, gyan program is in my thesis work hello everyone my name is Mayank Ratudi and uh, i did my BTech in civil engineering and now i am a student of MTech in hydraulic engineering and currently i am going to start my thesis work under the guidance of dr ajay shiva prasad sir on on the topic of ground water model modeling good morning everyone my name is shahana i am i have done my btech from college of engineering roorkee now i am a student of btech uh, india in hydraulic engineering under the guidance of dr dipesh ma'am and my thesis topic is rain for under modeling using wet model wet model Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Rohit Bisht, and I did my I did my. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. My, I am Rohit Bisht. Uh, I did my B Tech from Graphikara Hill University from Dehradun, and currently I am pursuing A Tech in the, this university. And I am in first year. Good morning, everyone. My name is Prakash Sharma. Uh, I am pursuing my M Tech first uh, in from this university. I am in first year. Uh, I did my project on uh, uh, removal of hardness uh, using uh, coconut shell uh, activated carbon. So I think this uh, this uh, this will help me. This seminar will help me a lot uh, for this. Thank you. thank you for everyone for uh, describing your uh, works i try to get uh, some notes to uh, some notes to uh, know better uh, and when i describing the things i try to consider uh, some of you working on uh, water quality modeling some of you working on uh, removal of pol pollutants um, uh, and i think we have some uh, parts especially with related to soil process modeling it very related to the uh, people who are working uh, on both uh, uh, group uh, uh, because sorption process is uh, important for water quality modeling and also for removal because one of the uh, process for uh, treatment uh, of the pollutant is uh, uh, one of the technologies is sorption uh, we can, uh, we use uh, some materials can sort the pollutants to itself like activated carbon zoolite 
and uh, also pens. Uh, some of them are uh, like resins, some of them are very really cheap, and some of them are expensive. Uh, but they can absorb the pollutant to themselves and we can uh, eliminate them. Uh, so, the inform uh, uh, so modeling the uh, pollutant absorption to these solvents are useful for both um, uh, sides. Uh, for water treatment, to design the treatment of the uh, treatment plants, and for the water quality model modeler to model how the sorbent happens and how it acts the water pollutant uh, reward. Uh, I hope uh, uh, some of you later we can also uh, continue some collaboration because uh, maybe mm, uh, the area that I'm interested in have uh, mm, similar with uh, the area that you are working and maybe we can uh, collaborate. We have also some uh, parts about the climate change uh, effect and I will be happy also when we reach to uh, this part, the people who are working on the climate change uh, effect, uh, say their experiences. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, th th this course could be two-sided. It it wasn't uh, necessary to be one-sided. Uh, in each part, uh, of course, you are in your PhD, in your master, or in your project you are working. You have some experience. Especially, I have not some idea about India, so I would be happy to share your uh, results. I will say some basic about the topic and my experiences, and good night. That if you also add your experience in the topic. For all of us, it would be a great opportunity to share our experiences. So, uh, uh, I, uh, if Dr. Prasad let us, we can start uh, the course. Uh, uh, I, before I start the water pollution, um, uh, I get some uh, idea from uh, Dr. Misra, the Vice Chancellor. So, I, I, I'm thinking maybe it, it would be nice also I give some information about the uh, um, water um, status in Iran, in our country, how is the um, water situation and what problems we are facing to. I need to be sure because of our main uh, topic would be water pollution. But you know, uh, they are both related to each other. We have two main concerns. First, water qu quantity and second, quality. And they are also related to each other. They are not separated. When the um, qu uh, quantity um, uh, decrease, then uh, the quality also will, um, uh, will more affected. Uh, for example, uh, because <coughs> if you consider a river, this river, uh, the um, pollution which enters uh, enter it is usually constant. If you consider it constant, um, of course, it's uh, increasing because uh, population will increase. So the production of the factories increase, the agricultural lands uh, increase, they use more pesticides and like this. So it will be increasing in the time. But, uh, the effect of the climate change and also the uh, population uh, will, will reduce the discharge of the river. We heard some um, examples of uh, our colleagues that they told us. So when the uh, quantity of the water in the river decrease, so this pollution will, will be more um, bad for the river. The concentration will increase. I mean the pollution will be increased. So they are very related to each other. Because of that, the climate change effect will happen. Uh, so, uh, I will start with this uh, topic. I don't know why it's not working. Yeah, it's working. This is uh, Iran, uh, and oh, they didn't want to show things. Uh, th because this, these slides are not prepared for this uh, course, uh, I just get the idea, so I bring uh, the slides from uh, other uh, presentations that I had uh, for summer school. This is Iran, the map of uh, the uh, view from the top. This whole area is Iran. We have two main uh, mountains. On the from north to south on the west of Iran and from uh, west to the east on the north of Iran. This is the Caspian Sea. Maybe you heard uh, it. This is Persian Gulf and uh, Oman Sea on the down. The main source of water will be these mountains. I mean, uh, from the snow and from the rain, rivers goes through the uh, country. Uh, the good. Uh, we are lucky because. 
uh, the mountains when he here most of the waters are come to our country and uh, uh, mm, we can uh, control the waters and they don't go to other countries of course we have uh, some uh, sharing system uh, with uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan here and uh, already we have some small conflict with them uh, but uh, not very serious and uh, but in the middle uh, we have a lot of problems with uh, water because our country is uh, very scarce in water uh, as I've heard uh, you have more than 1,000 milliliter millimeter of uh, rainfall each year but we have 250 millimeter of rainfall and the problem is that it's not even uniform. We have in the north, most of the water, uh, this average is come from all uh, cities. And here we have more than one meter of rain in the north of Iran. So you can consider here is less than 50 millimeter uh, uh, sometimes. Because then we have one, one meter of rain here. So uh, for average to be 250, we have some places that we never have um, rain. And here is uh, we have two big desert uh, which um, has almost uh, no rain in the summer. But if if we, can, we want to see what the problems that uh, have what uh, what raises from, uh, we will see uh, the rain distribution of rain from 1951 to 2012. Yes, we have a increase. Um, we can uh, say it, it is from the uh, climate change but um, some scientists also are not agree with uh, is uh, doesn't agree with this and they said it is not related to the climate change because they believe that before 19 uh, before 2000 we don't have enough uh, rain stations and the number of ra uh, rain gauge stations which uh, collect the data was not so much so the average that we ca uh, calculate here with the average that we calculate here are not the same. So some of them believes that these trees can be related to this, but even if we consider this decrease, uh, it's not uh, so much high this decrease. Uh, but the most problem of the climate change is the uniform. Uh, uh, it changed the distribution regarding to the time and to the place, uh, both of them. Uh, for example, in some places that we had rain much more before, we have now less rain and in some places the rain uh, increased. So the distribution also changed, and also the timing and the kind of the, uh, um, the type of, uh, mm, um, for example, some places they had so much snow, nowadays they have less snow, they have much more rain. And it is also a problem because in uh, the country that we have, usually snow is much more important because it's uh, produced um, water continuously during the year. So in the winter, it's a uh, reservoir, uh, it, it will stay on the mountains, and in the um, uh, summer, it melts and comes to the rivers. Uh, if I speak fast, please tell me that uh, speak, uh, is it good, yeah, is it understandable? Yeah, okay. This is the temperature uh, distribution uh, during the years from 1951 to 2012 again. You will see the, again, the increase in the temperature uh, so we uh, have both rain decrease and on the other side we have the increase in the temperature and also we should consider that uh, the population of Iran is uh, dramatically uh, increased uh, after uh, 40 years ago uh, 40 years ago uh, mm, the population of Iran was 20 million people uh, after the revolution, because the strategies changed, uh, suddenly the uh, population increased, and we are now more than 86 billion people. A million people, of course, uh, for India it's not a big uh, uh, population, but for our country and for the resources that we have, it's a shock. You know, the increase uh, of the population from 20 million to um, 86 million people. So it is uh, one shot. Uh, this this slide uh, is um, from the other things. Uh, uh, I was talking about the historical water management in Iran, but now I don't want to talk about historical water management. 
I want to show the current situation. Yes, this is uh, that I uh, I was talking about it. The population of Iran you will see from 1960 to 2010. It's uh, if you consider it with Iraq and Saudi Arabia, two neighboring countries, you will see that this slope is very faster. So our population uh, fastly increased. And what happened to Iran? This is the uh, wells uh, in Iran. Uh, the, uh, you will see from 1971 uh, to 2011 how the wells increasing, the wells that the people do for extracting water from the groundwater. You see in 2011 uh, there is no place. Uh, they already, all places in Iran uh, have uh, some wells to get the water. And if you see there is nothing because the, here is not, uh, there is nothing. This is too, too desert that I am talking about it. Uh, we have nothing here. Uh, nobody lives here and it's a complete desert. The, the places that people are living, you will see. And we can understand what can happen to the groundwater uh, that we have. Especially the other uh, water management problem that we have, changing the uh, crops uh, in 40 years ago, before 40 years ago, the crops in Iran mostly was adopted with our um, climate. They are uh, uh, special for uh, um, dry lands. We had a lot of knots and everything that they don't use so much water. But uh, kind of, um, after that, um, because of the new technologies, we can easily bring the water outside uh, the um, uh, groundwater. So the people change the crops. They start um, to use uh, more peach, apples, which is more economical and they give better uh, money, but they need more water. And what uh, happened? And uh, this is uh, the number of the dams which we made in different years. You see the years here, 2001, 2006, 2011, 2016 and 2021. You see, again, there are lots of dams that they constructed all over Iran. So, of course, they will affect the downstream. Another method that the government used for mm, saving the water, uh, for uh, um, saving the people, because, uh, for example, the Yas province. Do you remember? I told you here is a desert. Yes, and the Yas province is here, so there is no water to mm, uh, mm, for people. So they are used. They are try to bring the water from Esfahan city, not mm, Esfahan and uh, another city, from here to here. So they make a big tunnel and bring the water from one of the rivers here. There is a very good river here. They get the water from here and bring it for yes, for drinking and for agriculture and these kind of things. And after a while, the city of Esfahan start to have problems because the water goes there. So they them, themselves need water. So they put pressure on the government and they bring water from another uh, um, basin. Uh, the, uh, in this map, the colors show the basin. You know, this is the basin of the uh, country, and the lines show the provinces. Uh, so, uh, we bring from this basin, first from this basin to this basin, from this basin to this um, basin. This is another technique that the government use for uh, bring the water from uh, the places that has much more water to places that there is less water. But of course. It again start to um, have problems because uh, here also after a while um, they they need this water. Uh, we ha we have not so much water that we can uh, send it to other parts. So what happened? This is the river that I'm talking about you, and they bring water from this to other uh, uh, places. This work and along with other things, not only that uh, that happening because the population of uh, Esfahan city also increased the agriculture. You know, um, Esfahan is a dry place. But because uh, Iranian people like rice so much, and uh, they uh, we eat every day uh, rice, and it is very expensive, so uh, some farmers in Esfahan start to use this water to producing rice. And you know, for rice you need the ponds 
to uh, and in a in a city which is dry so you can understand how much evaporation we have so how much water we need to survive these uh, ponds so the um, these kind of activities which is not very good uh, for a uh, dry uh, um, uh, country this happened to the river this is one of the historical bridge a lot of tourists from all over the world come to the, see this bridge which is uh, for 500 600 years ago and it is one of the tourist attractions in iran now it's dried and when the river is dried it's not much more beautiful to attract so of course the number of the tourists will decrease and uh, this is one uh, a small problem the biggest problem is this and you you can imagine how much bad is for the environment and the temperature of Aswan uh, city increased because this river was somehow controlling the temperature of the city also it was a huge amount of water of course it affects the uh, uh, temperature and also the groundwater recharge will decrease because before this I, I know a lot of people in Espan because I all live in Espan. Uh, a lot of people their wells start to dry after the water inside the uh, river stops, so the recharge stops, and certain, uh, the water level in the uh, wells goes down. This can make also problem regarding to the pollution. We have uh, a lot of factories. And most, uh, the most important one is a steel factory that use water of the Zyro um, uh, for cooling system. So they bring the water inside, make it cool, and send it again to the river. When there is no water inside the river, the small amount of the pollution make a lot of uh, uh, problem. So we have some area that the soil and everything will be uh, affected. This is uh, another one. Another example, which has more international uh, effects, I mean, uh, it is more popular and people heard more about it. It's Euronia Lake in northwest of Iran, and it is a lake which, which is salty. And uh, you can see, you can see what happened to it. It is uh, the uh, picture before the problem, and now this is the new picture. You see, uh, these are salts because um, the water is going to uh, finish and uh, this is a big problem and uh, a lot of a group of uh, from japan and from other countries are come to solve this uh, problem and to help to solve this problem but you know it's most mostly related uh, to the uh, and then the people want to do water so you can uh, fit it's not only um, related to the sense it is related to a lot of things you can the, the farmer use this water for um, for their life yes they produce materials they sell it and they bring money and uh, from this they have their family to survive so if you tell him stop and uh, let the water go to the um, lake he cannot do it because he needs this water and this money this is the picture of the Yumia lake you see in front here the water comes down also you see the happy Another effect of this water comes down is land substance. When the water table goes down, you know the so the land start to go downer and land land uh, uh, subsidence happens. I think this is sufficient. Uh, uh, here I was talking about uh, how we can understand if we are water scarce or not. I see if there is a picture from them. Yes, this is the water scarcity in 2013. Where is India? Here. Here is India, yes. Yes, this is India, yes. Uh, your country will be in 1000 to 2000. This is the, the, the water that you will have in 2030 based on your uh, per capita. Percent how much water will have based on your... Uh, and it will be in 1000 to 2000. So uh, you are a little bit under pressure. The, the blue one is the places that they will have no problem regarding to the water. The red one, they have a, a very uh, serious problem. Our country, Iran, is already in it. So we will have a serious problem in 2030 regarding to the um, water. 
this uh, uh, this uh, index shows how much matter you have for each person okay it doesn't relate to the management and uh, there is a uh, if it is than 1000 then you have a serious problem i mean if you have all your resources divided to population okay if it is less than 1000 cubic per person then it's a serious uh, problem for the country uh, it's hard to manage this water for for the people you you will have uh, you won't have enough water to produce food uh, health uh, drinking it's not only related to the drinking water drinking water 1000 uh, cubic meter is so much money for one person for, for one year but for um, food clothes uh, health uh, social services for everything need water uh, so it's not sufficient but you see two percent the world population would be in a uh, problem and it is a very uh, warning point so it shows that we should be careful this is one side of the problem uh, quantity another side is the pollution that now we are going to talk about it uh, if anyone have question about this part i can answer it otherwise we can go to the next step I don't know uh, if you heard about it or not. This is a news which recently happened in, in January 6, 2008. Uh, Sanchi, which is a, I don't know uh, if anybody heard about Sanchi. No. It was an Iranian ship for uh, carrying the oil. And it was, uh, it was going to uh, Korea, South Korea, for bringing 1 million barrels of con condensate and ultra light crude oil and in the middle of the way they, it has an accident with another ship and a catastrophe happened you see it start to burn and a lot of materials comes to the sea and there two people were killed it was uh, uh, this ship but it is not a topic they were killed it's the topic is the pollution that come into the sea and uh, it's really hard, uh, and they, I think I don't know uh, how much money, but it, it's a lot of money to clean this water, this solution, and don't let it go uh, to the environment. But of course, it's hard to do it, and it will happen. This is one of the examples of the pollutions that human being produces. But before we go to more examples, at first uh, we try to uh, have a definition for the uh, pollution. And because it is uh, definitions are important, I try to read uh, from the source, then I don't lose any mm, point. Uh, this mm, text is from the report of the UNESCO, Water in a Changing World. I will give this uh, report also after the course, I, uh, because each topic has some uh, documents also about it. I will put all of them uh, in one uh, document and I will share with all of you the segment. Pollution typically refers to chemicals or other substances in concentration greater than would occur under natural condition. For example, if you have an average of one element in a river for many years and um, in natural process, that what happened in the natural. If uh, this amount uh, in increase because of our activities and other activities, then we will call it pollution. Major water pollution include microbes, nutrients, heavy metals, organic metals, oil and sediment, heat, maybe, you, don't, uh, you know, heat itself is uh, pollution for the, wa for the water, which arises the temperature of receiving water, because it's increasing the, for example, as an example that I told you about uh, a steel factory, which use the water of the river to uh, uh, make cold the um, uh, heating system, then this water become warms and come to the river then the river, the river temperature increase. This increasing in the temperature will affect a lot of uh, activities inside the river. Biological activities, 
chemical uh, um, process and all of these things will change and it can affect the life of the animals they live in, inside the um, river they change the diver diversity and it has its effect and of course it's not good because any change in the natural system usually are not good can also be pol pollutants are typically the cause of major water quality degradation around the world these are the pollutants which is uh, always uh, our concern Okay, in, uh, in, this we can, uh, in this slide we can see the source of water pollution, uh, the main source of the wa water pollution are human beings, uh, cities, one of the most important uh, uh, um, source, you, you can imagine what happens. There are a lot of uh, heating system in the houses which produce a lot of uh, pollution at first in the air, then uh, with rain it's come down and goes to the groundwater, to the rivers, and also the wastewater which produce with the city, uh, a huge amount of wastewater, if you consider the cities who live like Tehran in Iran, more than 10 million people, in, in Delhi I don't know how much people live in Delhi. Do you have any estimation of how many people live in Delhi? 50 million or less, more? You have no idea. <laughs> okay, in uh, Tehran, for example, 10 million people live, so a huge amount of um, uh, wastewater. 80% of the water that the people use usually goes again as a wastewater, so, which include a lot of uh, detergents, uh, uh, the materials that the people use for washing mm, dishes, their body, and other things goes to, so we have a lot of combination of uh, um, pollution from the cities, which comes to the uh, groundwater system. It depends on the uh, how much, uh, for example, in uh, Iran, uh, <coughs> before 20 years ago, and remember when I was a child, we have no wastewater collection. All the wastewater goes to the wells. I don't know now is, uh, uh, how is in India now. Uh, but uh, which is very bad because the, we all put all wastewater to the west and then goes the groundwater. So it makes the groundwater completely pollutant. And then we use this groundwater for drinking. So uh, it's not uh, very good. But nowadays they start to change it. They produce uh, wastewater uh, systems that can collect for big cities, of course, for small cities, no. Uh, for Tehran and um, Esfahan. They collect the wastewater. It, this system is better and bring it to the water treatment uh, uh, factories. They treat the water and then send it to uh, rivers or using as an agriculture. But it would be a problem also. I will talk about it later. So the cities, the factories and industrial site, of course, it's uh, another source of pollutants, um, which is sometimes more serious than the cities because when it is an industry, so it uses a lot of uh, metals, heavy metals. For example, if you consider a, mm, a factory which produces batteries, so they use a lot of nickel, cadmium, heavy metals. So uh, their waste uh, will produce a lot of uh, pollution to the groundwater system. Uh, agricultural lands runoff from the agricultural lands is another uh, problem. You know, when you are doing agriculture, you use a lot of pesticides, you use a lot of uh, um, fertilizers to um, protect your uh, production and increase your production. Rainfall will uh, uh, bring this these, uh, pollution into the rivers and also to the groundwater. This is another source of uh, pollution. So if um, uh, we as a human being till now, we have no posit positive side. We start to consume the uh, resources. Uh, these resources include water, air, um, materials that we bring out from the mines. Mines is another source of uh, water pollution. I forget to say the, the mines also is uh, very important. 
because you open the land and these uh, mines are uh, have a lot of concentration of some certain materials so when there is a rainfall again these material dissolves to the water and comes uh, to groundwater or to the rivers so uh, uh, we as a human being till now we have a no positive uh, effect on the natural we start to use the natural resources and deteriorate them and make it worse for the natural uh, for uh, first for the uh, natural itself and indirectly ourselves because when we uh, deteriorate the natural resources then we want to live in these places so we will be affected uh, what we can do to save the life of the uh, environment and ourselves of course we concern our, ourselves uh, but we need the environment also so it's a both sided uh, and we should uh, use the natural uh, um, resources sustainably we have two important uh, tools that help us to this direction which is our main objective of this course water quality regulation and st standards which is uh, one of the important tools we should have some standards and rules that uh, tell us how much pollution we can uh, send to the uh, uh, to the environment first for example if i have a factory and produce something i have a wastewater in my home in, in our home we have some wastewater this wastewater when it wants to comes back again to the river to the groundwater what uh, how much pollutant I have permission to send to the groundwater uh, or to the river. Okay, this is one standard I, sh I should know. And how can I measure it? We will talk about it. This is one side that we are talking about it. And the second tool is water quality modeling. This second tool is very important because also help this water quality regulation and everything. Water quality modeling help us to predict that what happens in the future, uh, and we can find the best places. I have a good, good water quality model of uh, De Delhi, for example. I have a if I have a, a good groundwater model, can model everything. Then I can see if I change my policies in the water management, in the uh, uh, land use, and everything. What would be the result 10 years later and I can find the best policies what is the best policy uh, how can I use uh, uh, if the if the farmers uh, use a different fertilizer for example they give the fertilizers instead of uh, winter a little bit 10 days later or 10 days sooner maybe we can decrease this is the thing that for example in Germany they use they uh, try to predict when the rain coming and uh, they uh, adjust how and when they give the nitrate to the uh, soil and then uh, they have less uh, loss of nitrate uh, uh, from the nitrate. This is two side uh, positive. First, they use less nitrate so they pay less to fertilizer. Second, there would be less pollution into the groundwater and this thing. So if I have a good model, I can predict uh, uh, and I can uh, do management for my resources. Also, I can do risk assessment with the uh, river. It's, uh, it's very um, clear how can I do. I can change the parameters and uh, understand how much risk I would have later. So this is another point of the uh, water quality modeling. And also, uh, in health care, the regulation is standard uh, um, to check if our water quality regulation and standards are working well or not. We need to have a system, uh, system of points, stations that we get um, uh, samples to measure the water quality parameters. So designing a water quality monitoring network can be uh, also done with water quality modeling. We can find an efficient one, uh, not more, not a, a lot of, uh, because if we increase the number of samples that we get, then we need more money. If if we have less um, uh, station for getting the samples, 
then we don't have enough data to understand what happens. So to find the efficient uh, way between these, we need uh, we can get help from the water quality modeling and to see which points are critical uh, for uh, uh, regarding the pollutions. Also, we should uh, know how much uh, how many pollutants we have, uh, what is the source of the pollutants, and what effects they have the pollution. Of course, I don't go di uh, mm, exactly in this way I will cover all of them but I will start from the type of pollutants I put it in this way because uh, the way of the talking shows better uh, in this way so whenever you have question you can stop me and ask your question The pollutions that we are talking about it uh, we, uh, is divided in two categories. One, conventional pollutants, which is consists of organic matter and inorganic uh, nutrients. Th uh, this uh, kind of pollutants are called conventional pollutants. We have hazardous substances. Uh, which contains organic contaminants and heavy metals. These are two categories for gluten. The main indicator for the con conventional uh, pollutants is BOD, biological oxygen demand, which is a indicator of how many uh, organic materials uh, in the water and how many oxygen we need to um, Yes, to de for, for, for decaying of this uh, in five days. And also fecal, coliform bacteria and pathogens. This is another kind of pollution. pH, total uh, suspended solid, inorganic nitrogen, and phosphorus. These are mostly nutrients, the ma material that uh, uh, comes into the rivers or groundwater. If you see different documents, you will find different categories. So uh, uh, it's hard to, um, I mean, uh, we reach to a final decision. So if you, uh, I myself sometimes when I see one book, he categorized in another way. So um, this is one of them uh, that I use. And the hazardous substances are mostly substances which is um, uh, not nutrient. They are themselves are bad, uh, and they are toxins usually, like heavy metals. If uh, a little amount of them are, are also are not good, and usually uh, the bad things of them is that they can uh, uh, stay in your body. I, I mean that maybe you are using a little bit of it, which is not dangerous now, but it can goes to your body, stay in your body, and it collected, 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 and after ten years. Uh, it, it shows your uh, shows the results and uh, make problems like lead, chrome, cadmium, uh, copper, mercury, phenol, chlorine residuals, and pesticides. These are hazardous materials, which is uh, bad for uh, for the hair directly. These are uh, the types of pollutions. But these kind of pollutions uh, uh, comes from uh, different sources. Again, uh, we can categorize these uh, sorts of pollutions in different ways. One of the important ways of categorizing is non-point source pollutants and point source pollutants. It is also important for water quality modeling because um, when you want to uh, uh, define the boundary condition in your numerical models. You know, nu numerical models is, are usually uh, uh, differential equations, which should be solved. And for solving differential equations, we need boundary conditions and initial conditions. Uh, to do, to, and also uh, some source terms which, uh, and sink terms. To uh, define the boundary conditions of the uh, 
these differential equations, we need to know that uh, uh, these two sources are important. Because for non-point source pollutants, you will do in some in one way, and for point source pollutants, you, will, you should do it in another way. So it's important to know which kind of pollutants are point source pollutants, and uh, which source are uh, point source, and which of them are non-point source. Again, to have no conflict, we will use a definition of the Clean Water Act of the USA. You can, uh, you can find a very good information in EPA website. Uh, again, I, I, pre I am preparing a, a page uh, which I share with you about the uh, useful links uh, that you can get some data about UNESCO, WHO, EPA. These are uh, the, the places that you can good, find good information about the water they have producing very good reports and very good materials that uh, uh, would be useful for, for you to study about them uh, because most of you are working on uh, water pollutant it's good to know about this. One of the, uh, this, um, this sentences that I bring is from Clean Water Act from the USA and it defines the point source and nine point source so it, it is a good res, uh, reference. Uh, the term point source means any discriminable confined and discrete convenience, including but not limited to any pipe, ditch, channel, tunnel, conduit, well, discrete fissures, containers, rolling stock, concentrated animal, feeding operation, or vessel, or other floating craft from which pollutants are or may be discharged. The term does not include agricultural storm, water discharge, and return flows from in, uh, irrigated agriculture. This is the definition of the point source pollutants. Of course, uh, the, uh, the wastewater from the factories, which come from the pipes, like these, and wastewater treatment system, when they put their, uh, their residuals inside the river, uh, of the, or point, yes, they are putting the water, but the water is completely removed. So the water that goes to the river again is put it, but it's using some standard. This is um, because the standards of drinking water is dif different with the standards of the wastewater. The wastewater you cannot drink it, but you can put it in the river. So again, this is a pollution because we assume that the river uh, itself purify the system. Uh, Mm, this is the, I will talk about it. This is a purification, self purification of the river. Uh, maybe explain a little. Do, do, do you know about the self purification? Yes. Okay. So I will talk later about it. Any kind of uh, source of pollution which is not uh, point source pollution is non -point. Because uh, in, in the definition, they try to have a very precise definition of point source. So if you have a uh, pollution source and is not compatible with that definition, so it would be a nine port uh, solution. The most important one is the agricultural farms. Agriculture is one of the main source of the pollution. In the agriculture, you use a lot of pesticides, fertilizers, and a lot of things. So, uh, and it would be a main source of the pollution. Also, abundant mine drainage. Uh, if you have a mine and it is open, then when you have rain, it really uh, dissolve the materials to itself and bring it to the uh, river or it infiltrated to the groundwater. So, mines are one of the important source of, again, non-point uh, source pollutant. Forestry. It's clear again, it's similar to agriculture. It's one of the source of pollutants. Hydro modification and habitat alternation. Any change that you do into the rivers, into the uh, habitat and diversity uh, would be a source of pollution. Mine and boating, highlands, urban areas, wetland, riparian management. These are the um, s main uh, source of, uh, non main sources which considered as nine non-point source pollutions.
Debris in the river also considered as non-point source pollution. You will see in a lot of places, especially the toothpick cases, a lot of plastic. Plastic is one of the important uh, pollutants. Uh, may you heard about it. It's a new topic that because this uh, plastic start to become uh, very uh, small materials, but they are not degraded. So they go to the bodies of animals, to bodies of us from the water and everything, and they are again collected to uh, body and make problems in the future. Um, and when you, for example, eat uh, animals like fish and everything, again, this uh, kind of uh, plastic comes to your body and make a lot of problems. So uh, the debris and plastic and everything in the river, again, of the point source pollution because you cannot again define a, uh, a restrict point that this uh, material comes. They can come from any point. In total, uh, now we are going to see what is the effect of the pollutions. We have different chemicals, which we um, um, uh, um, uh, categorize them to the conventional and hazardous material. Do you remember? We categorize in two sense. Uh, so we have some chemicals, which is considered as conventional, and some mat materials, which can be considered as toxic and hazardous materials. What effects they have on uh, on the system, on the water uh, and groundwater? Two main uh, effects they have. One, eutrophication, and second, toxic substances. We will talk about, uh, do you know the eutrophication? Yeah. We will talk about it more, and then I get some example of you uh, that you see in India in some places. Before I go to that, eutrophication takes place when the nutrient in water increases. Then uh, eutrophication happens. That we will um, talk about it. Most of the nutrients usually come from agriculture. And I, uh, I told you, agriculture, both of them somehow. Even toxic substances, most of them come from agriculture. Agriculture is uh, the main source of the pollution. This is the world map. If you see it, uh, it shows the change between 90, uh, 90 to 1999 and 2000 to 2007. They want to see how much, how much change uh, happened from uh, this year to this year. So this map shows the change, not the amount. It shows how much change happened. Is the change are high or low? The Green color shows very low, and the red shows the very increase because uh, uh, green shows the decrease and red shows the increase. So, complete red shows the most increase, and the dark green shows the most decreased level. For example, here we have the most decreased level of nitrate here in the South America and here here we have the most increase of using the nitrate in the soil and most of it is happened with uh, agricultural activities again India is here almost yes yeah? In this part, there is not. This is China or India here. I think it is China. China. India is here. In this part, uh, you have over. In this part, you have here. Agricultural activity is uh, responsible for more than 75 per percent of non-point source from uh, from the agriculture activities in U.S. And in the UK is the primary source of pollutant. Sixty percent of total nitrogen pollutant in the Netherlands is from agriculture. Ninety-four percent of the nitrogen inside the 270 rivers in Denmark is again from agriculture. Ninety-four percent, almost all of the pollutant in the river is from the agriculture nitrate. And th this map that you are seeing uh, here is from Germany, 
which are famous in uh, environmental protection. But you can see that even there, 60, uh, 36 percent of the groundwater bodies in Germany is in a bad situation regarding the nitrate. Uh, therefore, we will see that the pollution is an uh, important uh, risking factor in all over the world and the agriculture is one of the main source of this uh, problem. But when in a water body we have uh, more, uh, more uh, nutrients than the algae which lives there, they can produce more because they have more food and they start to grow. And uh, something happened that we call it eutrophication. You can see some maps I have, uh, some uh, pictures we have here. Uh, you see the algae which make it green here and also here you can see almost all of the uh, river is uh, full of um, algae. Uh, one of the wetlands in, in north of Iran also has this problem. If you go with boat inside it, you will see full of uh, uh, algae. And it really affects the uh, water bodies. Oxygen, the first uh, happening is the fluctuation in oxygen concentration. Of course, these algae is for production and for increasing they start to use oxygen and when they use the oxygen of the water the concentration of the oxygen will decrease inside the water bodies and in these uh, kind of water bodies sometimes you will see that the fish are start to die because they have not enough oxygen so the uh, diversity will decreasing inside these kind of water bodies because some of the animals will lose oxygen and will die and they cannot compete with these uh, materials because they have enough food they increase very fast they start to use the oxygen and other animals will lose of course the appearance quality will change when you see it it's not very uh, desirable uh, this is another problem and also the taste will change if you want to use this water uh, use for drinking uh, it will it would, would uh, it will not be good anymore for because it doesn't have a good taste okay so before i go to the other subject i, I would be happy if uh, hear from you some uh, individual experience about this uh, do you know any place in india which have this problem ostrification Lake. River. Ah, oh, the the it was a river or it was a ah it was a drainage system and now it's full of uh, the mm -hmm. yeah And uh, is there an also a problem with the oxygen uh, there or the um, uh, fish dying there or not? Yeah, oh yes, 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 also. So it's very uh, serious there. Uh, any other? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you for your sharing. Anybody other? No? Okay, so as we see, this is one of the common problems, especially in the ponds and lakes. 
as I understand, in uh, in the India River. Uh, uh, anybody have any uh, visiting like this river? Did you see this, such a thing also? Some problem. Huh? Uh, stagnant water, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it's uh, or low speed water, yes. If the speed of the water is uh, higher, uh, he, he said a good point. For example, when you are designing the, uh, the the people who are from hydraulic engineering, I heard some of them from hydraulic. When we are designing the canals um, uh, for agriculture, we have usually a, a, um, low, um, the lowest speed. That uh, speed, the speed must be high enough that no algae can uh, produce there. Because if speed is high, then they don't let them to uh, uh, act, be active and uh, produce and comes up. Yes, the speed is very important here. Mm -hmm. Yes, they wash them and go. Yes, they cannot. Um, grow when the speed is as, uh, from a minimum speed is higher than nothing happens so it is one of the criteria when you're designing but for natural uh, rivers and for uh, lakes this is not something that you design this is something which naturally here so uh, this problem can easily happen the speed in some river is low so it can really happen Okay, if we want to have a sum, a sum up about what this thing, we said that we have two sides. In one side, lim we have uh, limited water resources nowadays. Uh, so, from the quantity, we have not enough water to uh, uh, have uh, all our needs. This is one problem that uh, we have. And on the other side, nowadays, in most of the countries, because you know, in all over the world, the standards of life was increasing. So, fortunately, people uh, can survive more. They have a longer life and better life. But what will happen? The population increasing in all over the world. And this increasing uh, shows that we need more water. Okay, so we need more sources of water. One of the solutions that nowadays the, uh, the country is using, especially uh, also Iran and uh, all countries uh, try to use this, is using the water for the second time. For example, you have a city, you bring uh, the, uh, I told you 80% um, of the water that we are using in the, uh, in the city become wastewater. I mean, uh, you don't use uh, all water. Uh, you pr use the water and you have some wastewater. 80% of the water that you use again come back uh, to the drainage system. Uh, one of the methods to survive about the quantity, not quality, is using a uh, reuse of this water. So we should um, correct the water and uh, use it again. But uh, it is not uh, uh, helpful if we don't take care uh, enough because this water is polluted. So we need to um, make the water again use useful. So we should do treatment on it and again use it. There are, if you go to the um, internet and search about this topic, effect of the wastewater reuse on agricultural or soils, you will find a lot of research papers that shows how much, how would be affect. Uh, and today I, I will sh show you one of the research that we had in our university about one of the cities uh, to see what is the effect of the uh, wastewater on the agricultural products and on the soil. Because it is very important. This is one of the, uh, for example, in our country, they make a manual and this is one of the important uh, decisions of the government to reuse the water because i told you 80% of the water in the city will come back again to the so this is a, a huge amount of uh, uh, water 
uh, we can consider it as a source uh, of water and also uh, agricultural lands especially if there are slopy enough and you have a good drainage system uh, when you irrigate the agricultural land again you collect a lot of water so this water uh, instead of putting it into the river you can use it again for irrigation so it is a uh, pot good potential for using it but we should take care about it so it's good to look at the, what effect can it can have on the um, land on the agriculture so we are going to talk about it the uh, wastewater uh, can have effect on the groundwater again because if it comes back again to the groundwater it can uh, affect the groundwater and make it even if we, we don't use it and we send it again to the uh, let it go to the ground or let it go to the river of course it affects the groundwater it affects the uh, river it can affect our product if we um, uh, use this wastewater to produce for example wheat rice and whatever uh, this pollution come to eat but how and how much this is the subject that I'm talking about it and you can search about it and you can find a lot of papers about this and it is one of the hot topics that the people do about it on soil of course it can affect the soil regarding the chemical, uh, chemical composition and also about the physical uh, characteristics and also about the fertility salinity and heavy metal inside so I am going to talk about a case study that we have done in Iran. This is uh, Ghazvin and this is Tehran. There is a city around here uh, between Ghazvin and Tehran, something here. We call it, uh, it is an industrial city. A lot of um, uh, small industries are come together and their houses and there is a, a small city. And this uh, city, yes. This city, which uh, this part is uh, composite of houses of the employees and workers, and also the industries. All of them together are here. The water is collected and comes here to a treatment plant, water treatment plant, because they know that this water is very polluted. So they bring the water here because these industries are uh, using batteries everything they, they produce batteries and everything so they have a polluted water and after doing treatment here the water goes and used for ag agricultural here they use for uh, uh, irrigation system of the agricultural land here the main topic of our um, research was to see how is the effect of this water on the soil and on the plants here Again, this is another view of the water treatment plant. You see, uh, these are uh, the basins that they use for chemical reaction and also for aeration and other um, uh, wastewater treatment plants. This is for aeration and chemical. And you can see the agricultural farms around it. And this is the outside. <coughs> From the appearance, we can consider that this uh, uh, treatment was not so much successful, at least regarding the appearance. But when we check the um, water quality of the uh, um, comes out, the, the water that comes out from the uh, wastewater treatment, the water quality is good regarding the uh, standard. There is no problem in the water quality. We had two, uh, three, uh, two study. One study was uh, experimental plus field study, and the other one only field study. So I divided to uh, three parts. At first, experimental uh, study. In the experimental study, uh, we, uh, we use some, uh, this part is done with uh, my another colleague. Uh, I, I was responsible for one of the field study and uh, he was responsible for the uh, other two and uh, this is the result that I'm bringing here. 
one of our master students uh, did this. Uh, we used some uh, plants and we irrigate them with wastewater that we get from the um, that plant and bring to the laboratory and uh, we try to measure uh, different parameters there. We measured Cu, Zn, and Pb. In the uh, sorry, in in the experimental part, uh, I want to show the and the plants was parsley, lettuce, tomato, and radish. Four. Uh, plants were considered in the experimental part. R uh, parsley, lettuce, tomato, and radish with three elements, Cu, Zn, and Pb. And we measured this in the soil. Uh, for, uh, we had a, uh, um, a bowl of the um, plants and we irrigated it for one year. And then we measured the pollutant afterward into the soil and into the plant, in the roots, in the stems, and in the uh, product to see how much is the pollutant in different part afterward. And we had a two field study. In the first field study, we choose two uh, different farms. One farm uh, only irrigated with the clean, uh, clean water, and one farm near that, uh, near that one which only irrigated with polluted uh, wa uh, water to see how is the uh, difference. And the plants was wheat and barley and uh, the, the heavy metal was cadmium and chrome that we measured. In the second field study, uh, only it ha it takes place on the pollutant polluted uh, area. We don't compare, uh, and we measured Cu, Pb, and Zn again in tomato, corn, eggplant, and pe uh, pepper. Okay, now we go to the results. In this table. We will see the result of the water analysis of the wastewater plant. It's not related to the uh, product yet. The, the water itself, the water which comes from the water treatment plant, is it good or bad? It is interesting. We can see that for cadmium, for example, uh, this uh, table uh, shows another uh, interesting thing to us. The, the standard that uh, we bring it here is the standards for different countries, for EU, UK, USA, Canada, China, India. Uh, there, there are different um, standards. Each country usually have a standard. We will talk about uh, this issue again in the uh, um, uh, other part of the course. And each country have its own uh, criteria. You will see that the criteria are different. For example, for cadmium. India, we have 3 to 6 PP, uh, ppb, China 0 0.2, Canada 1.4, USA 19.5, UK 3, EU 3. So different values they, uh, they have. But uh, in the wastewater, we had 3.3, and in the clean water, we have very low. And, uh, we can consider it as a good. If you if you uh, if you compare it with China, yes, it's not uh, good. But uh, in total, we can consider it as a good uh, water quality. Chrome was 57 in the wastewater, and the clean water. The clean water, I mean uh, here the well water. There were there were some uh, groundwater, and they bring the water from the groundwater. It was 30. Again, uh, with Canada, if we consider with the standards of Canada, it's not so good. But with other standards, we can consider it as a good water. Again, for CU, PB, and ZN, 
we have no problem. All of them are more or less in a good situation. So, what would be the result? You think the water is not polluted? Yes. When we see from the results, is not polluted. So we expect that the pollution don't go to the uh, plants. Yes. We 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 expect this because based on the standards, it's good. But we can go further and to see what is the result. This is our experimental result. Here is the Cu, lead, and Zn, and we had soil because we wanted to see the effect on soil, latex, tomato, radish, and parsley. When we use a normal water, when we use waste water. You can see a slightly uh, more polluted when you use, uh, because, uh, but again it is interesting because there was not uh, waste, our waste water is not polluted, again it is clean water somehow, because it is uh, in the standard values. But high level, more, more than the uh, normal water. But it is interesting that if uh, uh, in this number is the standard value uh, for the, I mean for the LaTeX, uh, we shouldn't have more than 10 ppm Cu for the, um, uh, and also about the lead, it mustn't be more than 0 0.1 ppm inside the uh, product for Zn it mustn't be more than 20 inside the product to consider safe. If you uh, look at this you will see that the lead in all situation is more than a standard which is polluted. This is because of the accumulation it can accumulate into the soil and these things. So even if the water have a low level of uh, uh, materials uh, again it can accumulate to it and becomes more than the uh, standard values into the product in the in this table uh, we can see another uh, factor here it, uh, it calls transportation factor it shows that inside the plant how the pollutant is a uh, uh, movement and we calculate it by dividing the concentration of the pollutant into the aerial part to the concentration of the material to the roots. For example, if uh, for Cu and for LaTeX it is 22, 0.22 for Cu and for tomato is 0.18. It shows that 18% of the uh, uh, Cu is inside the aerial part and around 80% is in the root. So it shows that the latex, uh, not, no, sorry, tomato for the Cu is very good. Only 20% of the pollutant can come to the tomato. Uh, not only tomato, the tomato and the stems and everything. So in the tomato, maybe it is less also. But for example, 30 percent of parsley, and parsley is uh, more because it is a vegetable and you eat all of them. 30 percent of the cadmium comes to, uh, uh, Cu comes to the leaves and you eat it. So it's not, these uh, TF show a very, uh, a lot of information to us for management of the what kind of uh, for example if you know a, a soil is polluted so it's better that um, use the product that has a lower TF transportation factor because when this transportation factor is small so it shows that most of the uh, things will be collected in the uh, roots 
and you don't eat them at least. So uh, if you know a, pl a place is polluted, it's better to use a, mm, mm, something that has a lower TF. But again, if you want to that uh, land, make a land reclamation. I, I heard one of you work on land reclamation, yes. Uh, if you want to work on land reclamation, then it's you use a plant who has a T high TF because you use this uh, mm, land, in this plant, this plant absorb these pollutants, bring it to the aerial part. You can eliminate this aerial part, bring it to, to the factory to clean them. And in this way, you can make the soil better and better with two or three times. So it depends on what is your, what's your aim, so you can plan. Uh, this TF is very good. You can find this TF factor in different research papers by searching into the internet about, because this is one uh, a study, uh, it must be remit, repeated. Then we, dis, we uh, have a certain value for the LATEC, for the, um, uh, for certain elements. Okay, so maybe we should finish uh, our plan and go for lunch and uh, uh, about it, um, we will continue later. Okay.